All right, so you've made your Rust server, you have your Discord server, and it's growing in population every single day. Things are probably moving along quite well for you and your Rust community, which is great. So now you might be asking yourself, is it time for a website? And no matter what stage you're at in your career, the answer is always going to be yes. So even if you've never built a website before, you need to know that it's really inexpensive and super easy to do, especially when you have what I'm about to show you on today's video. Hey everyone, welcome back to Rust Admin Academy, where I'm teaching you everything you need to know about owning and operating a successful Rust server. On this channel, I do plugin reviews, tutorials, plus I want to show you as many of the different tools you can use to help make your job that much easier. So if you're brand new to the channel, consider subscribing so that you stay up to date on everything that we're working on. All right, so before we get into all the details of this, I want you to have a look at this masterpiece that you're seeing on the screen right now. This is a website template available from loan.design and I've made one single change on it in preparation for the recording of this video. All I did was change the server that it's displaying right in that center location. Other than that, this is exactly how you would see it if you downloaded it from loan.design. So right out of the bag, this website just works and it's super easy to customize. I'm going to show you all about that in just a minute. But just to give you a quick rundown of how things actually work, the menu bar at the top works exactly like you would expect it to. Home, servers, shop, rules, staff. And then there's also another feature that is currently turned off and turned off by default, which is an FAQ. And if you click on the link in the description, as well as in the pinned comment down below, you'll be taken to this web page right here on loan.design. This has all been created and maintained by Astonix on loan.design. And as you can see at the time of the recording of this video, he's actually put it on sale at $19.99 from a regular $29.99. I also have a promo code for the viewers of this video that will save you an additional 20% off of whatever the price happens to be when you see this video. Now, as far as hosting a website, it's typically pretty easy. Most website hosts make it super simple for you to just simply upload a bunch of files to a website and boom, you're live. So when you download this package by Astonix, it's going to come to you in a zip folder. You simply extract that folder and then you upload all of those files to your host and boom, your website's up and running. But now it's time to actually go in and customize things. Now, typically speaking, if you've ever seen any kind of an FTP client before, you're going to be familiar with what you're seeing on my screen right now. I am logged into my website right now and these are all of the files, everything that you see highlighted there. These are the files that get extracted from the archive folder that you get from Astonix. Now, for most of you, you're only going to deal with two, well, probably one, but maybe two of these different files. The first one is the images folder. So if you want to upload your own background images or whatever, you would put those files in this folder right here so that the website could then reference those images and replace the ones that are currently on there right now. But for everybody, you're going to do most of your work inside of the file called config.php. And by default, this is what your configuration file is going to look like. So when you're going through here, it might look a little bit intimidating, but trust me, it's not. Anything that you see in green is where you would be adding your own information. Anything that you see commented out or in a different color that isn't green is basically just a description of whatever's below it. It's super easy to navigate around. This is probably one of the most simple configuration files you're ever going to deal with. So this section that I currently have highlighted right now is obviously just what the title of the website is going to be. And on your website, it translates just like this. The logo and the background image, you can change those to whatever you want them to be. There are some defaults that are already there. You just simply have to upload different images to that images folder that we talked about a minute ago, and then make sure you call the actual file name instead of background dot whatever you would put in whatever file name it is that you've actually uploaded to your host. Then we get into the servers and by default, it's set up with one server on there. It's not this server, but it's all in there to show you what the syntax needs to look like in order for it to function correctly on the website. And yes, you can add as many servers in here as you want. I just simply copied the whole thing from bracket to bracket, go down one line tab tab so that you're lined up with the one before it. And I just simply pasted it in two more. So if I were to save this file right now, my FTP client is obviously asking me, okay, it's seeing a change to the file. Do you want to re-upload it to the host? And yes, of course we do. And we can go back to our website, simply hit refresh. And now we've got three servers in there where we only had one before. There's also a section of the configuration file that allows you to show if a server has been just wiped and for how long you want to show that for. By default, this is set up for 24 hours. So for the first 24 hours after a server has been freshly wiped, it'll indicate that that server has been just wiped. There's a section where you can show some details about your shop, whether that be a Tebex or whatever else you've got going on. You can show off a couple of items that are available in your shop. And then of course, a button where they can click that will take them directly to it. You also want to 
way for visitors to your website to actually get to your Discord. So you can put that information in there. That's this button in the top right hand corner right there. If you have any social media pages set up for your servers, you can also put that information in here. I'll show you what that looks like in a minute once I show you my actual configuration file instead of just the default one. You can define the rules that are going to be enforced on your servers or in your community or whatever, which looks just like this. And you can fully customize this heading as well as the response they get when they click on one of these headings. If you have staff that are helping you operate your community, then of course you can showcase them here. That way everyone knows who to contact if they run into an issue or if they have any questions about your community. And then of course we come to the FAQ section, which like I said before is turned off by default. So if you want to have this section enabled, you would have to change this to yes, just like that. And just like in the rules section, you can change the header as well as the responses for each one of them. And yes, of course you can add more lines it comes default with two. Of course, you can do the same thing as what we did before with the server section and just copy pasta more sections in. Just make sure you're following the correct syntax when you start getting into stuff like that. And then at the very end of the configuration file, we've got other navigation links if we so chose. If there's other locations that we want our community to know about, we can put those web addresses in here. We would obviously want to toggle this on and then whatever alternative addresses we think our community might need access to, we can define that information right here. So my suggestion is, is just slowly start going through the configuration file and make changes a couple of lines at a time, save it, re-upload it, and then go check your final result. I would highly suggest you don't go through the entire thing in case you happen to make a mistake and you don't know where that mistake is. If you're not familiar with website design, you might not be able to figure out where the mistake was made. So go slow, follow syntaxes, make sure you use the default configuration file as a reference point so that if you do make a mistake, you can probably go back and figure it out like that. And then hopefully when you're done, you should have a product that looks something like this with your own personal servers on there as well as all of your own personal information. So as you can see at the top here, I've got all of my social media links. These are all just for my YouTube stuff, not necessarily for my actual Rust community. And if you click on this join Discord button, obviously it's going to take you directly into my Discord. I've changed up a couple of the shop items just to show you that you can add as many items in there as you want just by simply replicating what's already in the default config file. I've changed my staff information to just myself, but you can have as many staff members as you want in there. During during my testing processes, I think I had like 12 different staff members on there. And here's what an activated FAQ actually looks like. So I've changed these up just a little bit just to give you an idea of what it looks like when you're adding more lines. I'm sure there's no limit as to how many of these you could actually have on your site. But of course, you want to keep it short in order to retain the viewer's attention. You don't want to have a thousand different FAQs on here. And now I've just realized that I went looking for those external links that I was just talking about a minute ago at the bottom of the configuration file. And then I quickly realized that they ended up at the top at the navigation bar, which makes sense. Why wouldn't I have assumed that that's where they went? Obviously, my titling doesn't look very good right now, so I'm going to change that real quick. All right, so I've just quickly made a couple of changes there. I'm going to save that file. I'm going to upload it to my host and then quickly do a refresh and this should look a little bit better. Yeah. So when you add extra links in the navigation section at the bottom of the configuration file, just be cognizant of what that's actually going to look like once it actually lands up there. I absolutely love that that functionality is there and I actually didn't know how this was going to look until I actually started recording this video, which was super fun. So that's the basic rundown on Astonix's website template. I think it's great. I think it looks good. And like I said earlier, you have the ability of actually changing this background image. You can also also change the shop image right there if you want to take your customization just a little bit further. But I truly believe that it's set up good. There's not going to be so many people out there using this website that everyone's looks the same. Plus, it has all of your own information on it anyways. So I don't think we should be worrying about repetition right now anyways. I like it. I think you did a really good job. It's definitely better than the other one that we've been using for years. And if we can really make this take off and let Astonix know that we love his products, then he's probably going to want to keep making more products. Speaking of more products. He does also have a leaderboard add-on. So if you want to have statistics from your server displayed directly on your website, you can get this simple stats add-on. And then of course, he also has a Tebex template available. If you're looking to keep consistency through your community, then your Tebex store would look similar in style to your website. So this isn't actually my website and I didn't ask the owner of it if I could display this information. So if the owner is out there and happens to see this video, I hope you're okay with me showing this information out. It doesn't actually identify anything but I hope you're okay with that.
But as you can see there, it shows up in the navigation bar at the top, just like everything else does. And then it shows the leaderboard for your server. But that's only if you have the leaderboard add-on, which of course is also available from loan.design. So I'm going to put a link to this website that I built just for this video in the video description down below. If you want to go check it out and play around with things and see how it's actually going to work for you, you can definitely use the one that I built for this video. It does have real live information on it, but I'm not about to use this for my own personal benefit because Astonix did send me this template just to record this video. So I'm not actually using it to promote my servers or anything like that. And in fact, I don't know how long the website will be up for. So if for some reason the website is gone, please let me know in the comment section down below so that I can remove that link. So if you're thinking about getting a website for your community, you definitely want to check out this template because it's slick, it's smooth, it works, it looks great, and the functionality is definitely there. It's kind of a one-stop shop. It has everything that we need for our community. We can connect to our server directly from the website. We can join the Discord directly from the website. We can check our battle metrics information directly from the website. We can go to our VIP store directly from the website. We can literally do everything directly from the website. Anyways, I've blabbered on long enough about this website. You all need to go check it out for yourselves and decide if this is good for your community. Trust me, you're going to love it. Now's the time to pick it up because I'm saving you 20% off. I don't know how long that's going to last for. Thanks for watching this week's video. I'll see you all next week.